Hi, and welcome back to The Mum Drum. Today on the show, we're chatting to Evelyn Belf about one of the biggest challenges mums face, how to transition from being a working person to a working parent in a sustainable and satisfying way. Ev, welcome to The Mum Drum. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So we're here today to chat about the work mum juggle. Yep. Whew, when you hear that term, what comes to mind straight away? So much. Um, and so much that I think you're unaware of, even oh, everything from kid sickness to having to change your whole work ethic, who you are, your whole personality changes when you become a mum, a working mum. Mm. Um, it's just mind boggling. There's so much going through my head as you say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a big, big one to start on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many balls that is, like 10 balls juggling at the one time. Yeah. Well, let's come back to all that stuff about your personality and yeah. your sense of self. Mm. Um, but tell us a bit about your kids, so how old they are and, yeah. and where you work, just to paint a bit of a okay. picture of your story. So I've got two girls. I've got Annabelle, who's um, two and a half, and I've mm. got Rose, who's seven months. Um, Annabelle has sass, as people have said it, so she is quite a challenge at the moment, um, but fantastic fun. Yeah. Um, and Rose obviously still in that baby phase, mm -hmm. so um, it's a lot easier than her sister was, and I'm hoping she'll be a lot more chilled out than her older sister, um, but we'll see. And I work at Seek, so I'm a head of product there. So mm -hmm. there's four of us who are heads of product, kind of looking after the different products in Seek's portfolio. Um, and that's a role I actually moved into in between my two mat leaves. So, um, yeah, that was kind of quite an adjustment. Um, so in between your two mat leaves, yeah, you're changing yeah. roles. Mm. Which was a real surprise for me, right? Because I always thought that was one of the things of women and careers and, you know, that those opportunities don't happen in your career will be stunted from going on mat leave. Mm. I took nine months last time and then shortly after I came back, my boss handed in his notice and it was like, oh, what am I going wow. to do? Yeah. And I think I just ultimately said, oh, I think I'd like to put my name forward for that and then went, oh, what have I done? What have I done? Yeah. And actually it was at that point that I spoke to Justine from Transitioning Well and Justine said to me, well, that was your gut just saying you want this. And I said, like, but I'm a new mum and I won't be able to give what others can give and oh, what I'm, I'm out of practice and my confidence. And she was like, just go for it. Mm. And yeah, I got the job and I was, and it was quite a big step up when I was like, and then had to go and tell them that I was pregnant again which was kind of tricky. Yeah. Just in my mind, tricky yeah. for me. They were mm -hmm. fine. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're the phases, aren't they? So there's that first phase <coughs> of sort of becoming a parent is actually being pregnant at work. And yeah. mums often don't think about that as being yeah. mm. one of the phases, mm. one of the experiences. Yeah. So, so tell us a bit more about that experience for you. Yeah, that really shocked me in my first, when I got pregnant, because even there's that whole phase where you don't tell anybody, right? And you know you're pregnant and kind of walking around going, oh my God, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. And um, you're so delighted and you kind of don't want to share that. And then you've got all these, oh, well, how's this all going to work? And even like, what are work's policies? And how's this all going to happen? Mm. How's this all going to unfold? How do I tell my manager? Um, like so much is going through you. And then especially in that first three months, it's probably mm. when often people feel the worst. So you're yeah. physically not feeling great and mm. but you yeah, can't tell just, anyone no either. you can't yeah, no it's really so challenging. it's yeah. a really hard time I think for expectant mums and something I hadn't anticipated happening and then I used to find myself as well like distracted in meetings and stuff because I'd be thinking about I'm gonna have a baby and, and then I was like what are you doing this isn't you focus yeah. um so all of that like I felt that that was kind of hindering me when and I don't think it was outwardly but just internally I wasn't used to having this distraction mm. there it was was a lot to kind of get used to and I think part of that distraction as well is mm. the fact that your whole identity is changing so mm. very much before you're pregnant your work is a big part of your focus and yeah. your identity and then suddenly mm. that's going mm. to change and morph into becoming a, a mum and mm. developing a new role and a new identity mm. so you can see how and why that is so distracting mm. yeah mm. can't yeah. you yeah and and you said um, that this isn't me. You were sitting in those meetings. Yeah. This isn't me. Yeah. How would you describe yourself before you were pregnant as a working person? Yeah, so probably very driven. Mm -hmm. um, I would never say no to anything. It was like take on that extra project, go that extra mile, stay longer, kind of just to get it done. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think I just really struggled then as to well, okay. what does 
how do I balance that with being yeah. a mum? Mm -hmm. What were you afraid of, sorry? Yeah. Just in yeah. that time when you were sitting in those meetings and mm. you were feeling all those changes and you didn't yeah. want to tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah, what, what were you afraid of? I think I was afraid of what if I completely change and mm. I don't want my career and I'm not interested anymore. Mm. Um, especially I've got a bit of, I'm the primary earner in my house. Okay. So I kind of knew, well, I'm going to have to come back to work. Um, and I was like, what if I don't like it? What if I don't mm. want that? What if I want to be at home with my baby all day long and don't want to be here? Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of played yeah, on my mind. Yeah, and you don't know until you get there, do you? Yeah. You're sort of no. trying to keep all your options open. Yeah. Um, but you have no idea about yeah. how you're going to feel and what, mm. what you want. So how did you manage that? Mm. I mean, how did you, did you just try and keep all your options open or? Yeah, I think I did. I, I found it um, hard when I would tell people I was pregnant and they'd say, when are you due and how long are you going to take off? It's all this like regular mm -hmm. conversation yeah. and then, oh, and how many days will you come back? And I'd say five. Really? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Kind of, mm. that's the reaction. And it was like, oh, is there something wrong with that? Should I? Mm -hmm. And then people would say to me, that'll change when you're on, when you're on your mat leave, that'll change. Mm. Just wait and see. And so, oh, okay. And did it change? Um, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I tried to come back four days and it didn't really work. Um, and I don't think that was the job or the company. I think that was me. Mm -hmm. So I found on the fifth day that I was off, I was probably still checking in a little bit and mm -hmm. a little bit distracted, not fully present with my daughter. Um, mm -hmm. And to be honest, I did find it hard in terms of people would wait until I was back in for decisions to be made or meetings would be put off. So then the four days when I was in the office were just hectic and stressful. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that. And I didn't like then who that made me on that fifth day off, mm -hmm. a stressed person who was worried about work. So I went to five days and did a compromise of working one day a week from home mm -hmm. right. and that was amazing and it that relieved well. all the pressure and yeah I was surprised and it was just about being flexible um, I only had my coaching my career coaching or return to work coaching after um, I had Annabelle oh. and um, so I had it all post and this time I had some pre okay. but um, that time I just had it post and it was then working kind of with Justine on well, what's going to work and how can I relieve some of the stress I was feeling initially and it's okay to work five days mm, mm, you know yeah. I mean I think I felt, felt like I needed somebody to give me permission yeah you're not a bad mum if you work five days a week mm. and where do you think that was coming from oh probably myself my okay. expectations and wanting to do it all um but I was the only mum in my mother's group who went back full-time mm -hmm. and so even having conversations with them I think was you know they were kind of like oh you mm. know that's like a bit of yeah. judgment there, is that what you felt? Or? I felt it, but I actually don't think they're judgmental on it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they were just a bit surprised, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And when you were, um, you know, that challenge of managing, uh, trying to juggle and manage it all, and mm. uh, the way you felt when you were home on that fifth day, um, did that start to impact on your emotional or mental health in any way? Did that sort of start to, you know, really become a bit overwhelming? Or do you think you were able to sort of nip it in the bud by... Um, you know, having the flexible work arrangement? Um, well, it took a little bit to kind of come up with what that mm -hmm. would look like. And it was definitely stressful mm -hmm. coming yeah. up to that. And I mean, I think that meant I was a bit stressed in work the whole week, mm -hmm. right? And then stressed at home on that fifth day. So it was like, I wasn't the best of myself yeah. in either place. Yeah. Yeah. And that's frustrating, isn't it? When you feel like you're not the full person you can be in yeah. either environment, yeah. so you feel compromised on both yeah. sides. And I think I'm lucky, Annabelle loves daycare and loved it from mm -hmm. the start, so there was no issue there, so it wasn't like I had that guilt of <gasps> putting her in an extra day or anything. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it goes the other way as well, like um, our work brings something to our parenting <clears throat> and our parenting can bring yeah. something to our work in, in a positive way. Yeah, yeah. Have you had that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Without realising it, I went back to work. I think it literally, for me, I can only see the one way from being a parent to um, going back to work. Mm -hmm. And a few people kind of said to me, oh, who's this new Ev? Because um, one of the best things I did before going back and working with Justine on was to say, you have to have boundaries. Because she said to me, you, you know, are you going to cut back on your work hours? And I said, I guess I'll have to. And mm. she said, do you want to be at home to bath Annabelle every night? And I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then she said, well, you're going to have to put that in place. Mm -hmm. So I came back saying, I'm leaving the office at five every day. Um, so any meetings need to happen before that need to be finished 
ideally by 4.30, mm. so that I can kind of finish up and leave by 5. Um, and so putting that ba- those boundaries in place just made it much easier. The reason the boundary worked is yep. because I had to be way more efficient at my time. Yeah. Mm. And so even in meetings, I was kind of like, okay, so what's the outcome? What are the next steps? Yep. And really kind of, not in a negative way, but just more so pushing on things and just mm. not just being a bit more assertive and Mm -hmm. people were like, who's this new Ev? Mm. And they were like, we like it. And I'd say, you know, I can't do that. You'll have to find somebody else to take on that project Mm. because yeah, that's not going to work. It's a lovely moment right now because your little one, Rose, (laughs) is actually here. So people might be hearing that crying in the background. (laughs) It's authentic. Yeah, this is the reality for being a mum because you're you're on mat leave at the moment with Rose. Yeah, and the babysitter cancelled yep. on me and so yeah I had to bring Rose along today <laughs> and here we are yeah. 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 and I've had to do that before as well with work the auto had to bring her in if yeah. I've gone in on check-in day or something and I can just bring her in and mm-hmm. yeah it's kind wow. of nice to be able to do that so you set boundaries yes what other things really helped you because you went your role is really demanding so yeah yeah there must have been some other big things you had to put in place um I think just not being afraid to tell people that like, you know, well, I've got to leave at this time and being comfortable with that Mm -hmm. and being comfortable pushing back and setting, I don't know, I got real reward coming back and being able to set an example for some of the other women in the company and sharing my experience with them and helping give them the confidence to push back or them the confidence to set boundaries. Um, Probably doesn't answer your question, Mm. but that's something I felt really passionate about when Mm. I came back from that leave. That's a really important, powerful role now, isn't it? Being a, a working mum, how yeah. how you are around other potential mm. women in that same situation. Well, I think you realise how little yeah. was there when I was going through it or mm. how I didn't realise if I had just spoken to other working mums, I probably would have made things a lot less stressful for myself. And mm. even knowing there's all these options or you can be flexible, you don't have to know exactly when you're heading off what capacity you're coming back into or what it's all going to look like. Mm, um, mm. So I think there's an awful lot about sharing stories mm-hmm. that we probably don't do enough of. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, which is why we're here. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, true. <laughs> Absolutely. And do you think um, the culture of your organisation is supportive of, um, mm-hmm. are they doing enough in terms of, or is there other things that organisations can do to really support that transition and, and guide and let mm. people know they're behind them as they manage this struggle and this juggle and the transition that they're going through? Um, I don't know of any organisations that's perfect yeah, um, of at all. Um, Seek are very good. Mm. There's still a lot they could do. I yep. think having the transition coach is probably one of the best things. Um, but even saying that, often you have to kind of know to ask for it, right? It's not this, there's yes. no checklist for every manager saying mm-hmm. somebody comes to you and tells you they're pregnant. This is how you do it. This is how you go through it. Mm-hmm. Um, so even that's something I used to spread the word of and say, oh, do you know you're entitled to this? Um, please seek it out, it'll really help you. Mm. So it's great having that service, but if you're not making it like part of a process or anything, then that's, it's kind of hard and you mm. need somebody to spread the word. Yeah. Um, but I think as well, because seek had been kind of a, came from a startup and has quite young, maybe workforces, you know, it's kind of growing older, yeah. Yeah. but a lot of managers won't have dealt with people who've gone on maternity leave. Yeah. Um, and even some people don't feel comfortable talking to their managers about some issues around maternity leave. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's important to have kind of a network or even mm-hmm. if it's an informal network in a company of, you know, returning to work mums or even dads um, and yeah. see how they can kind of support each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's something Seek has. So they give um, equal leave to the mums and the dads, mm-hmm. which I think is fantastic that the dads get that time off. Yeah, absolutely. But I actually think the mums need more. Yeah. So for me, even it was a shock coming to Australia because in Ireland it's kind of, well, a lot of like corporate organisations with standard six months paid leave. Wow. And then all of your holidays yeah. on top of that mm-hmm. get banked on. So people end up seven, eight months fully paid. Mm. Um, because the pressure is so great, isn't it? The pressure yeah. of, of the financials mm. often then starts to impact. Oh, completely. Our choices. Yeah, completely. You feel that pressure of having to return to work. Mm. And you said you're the primary um, earner earner in the home. So did you feel that? Yeah, well, for me, the the one thing that was kind of straightforward about returning to work was my husband also, luckily, um, even he's a primary school teacher, and his school gave him like a term off, fully paid as well, but had to be taken in the first year of 
baby's life yeah. so we always knew he was like I'm taking that time yeah. there's no way I'm not taking that time yeah. so we always knew I'd do nine months and he'd do three months mm-hmm. okay. so there was I think in a way I don't I yeah I didn't have that oh when am I going to go back when do I feel ready because for me it was always well you have to kind of have to go back then uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 that's quite a unique so you had infrastructure yeah. to work yeah, with. yeah. Mm. but I've spoken to other mums as well who've said it makes a big difference having the husband um take that time Mm -hmm. Mm. I think from both perspectives so say for example I remember my husband saying to me one day when I was on mat leave and he said I'll be home at five and it was like quarter past five baby had been screaming all day long I was like where is he that 15 minutes he came in the door I was like 15 minutes seemed like an An eternity and then I think I did it when I returned to work and he was at home with the baby and he was like hmm it's a newfound appreciation, yeah, isn't it? And it you don't know ways. until you've been there. Yeah, it's like yeah. 15 minutes. I relax. Know. <laughs> it really helped us have yeah. that appreciation mm. or for him to say, oh, gosh, you had dinner ready every night. How did you do that? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think it actually it does really help. Mm. Is Very there lucky. something about you, your relationship, uh, your communication styles that helped you make that happen? Um, it's definitely something we're still working on, yeah. communication <laughs> styles. And I think a lot changes within a couple mm. when you have a baby. Um, and I don't know that people are even aware of that or expect that yeah, because definitely. it's just this, yeah, everything changes, even mm. like date nights or just that flexibility of mm. doing anything isn't there anymore. Yeah. Um, and I think communication has to step up yep. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned... Um, Ev, earlier around even your sense of identity, your personality, mm. you felt like that changed. Yeah. When did you notice that? <clears throat> what was that like for you? Was that scary? Um, well, I think kind of what I mentioned, it's almost when you get pregnant. Mm. And that's what took me by surprise because I thought it was compartmentalised when you become a mum, that's when it all changes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But for me, it did change in that phase. Um, yeah. And definitely kind of starting thinking about peop- other people around me a bit more and what were they going through. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it gave me a lot more empathy, not just for mm-hmm. people who are pregnant or working mums, but also what other things were people going through that they couldn't share. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, You'd hear yeah. later that somebody had a sick child or somebody was going through something in their family and everybody has to come to work and just put on this work face. And but function. there's so much more going on behind mm. the scenes mm. and I think it really opened my eyes to that. Mm. Um, to really kind of check in with people and see mm-hmm. if people are okay and yeah. And you've had this experience with, with Rose. I, I know you yeah. mentioned to me um, earlier yeah. about being a very planned, organised person. Yes. Um, yes. And so when things don't go to plan, mm-hmm. oof. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So do you mind sharing yeah. a, a little bit yeah. about that with us and what yeah. that's been like compared to, I guess, the first time? Yeah, so um, I had thought, yeah, maternity leave, second time. Um, you know what you're in for, right? Yeah, yep. hopefully it'll be a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was going to keep Annabelle in daycare a few days a week mm-hmm. just to kind of, yeah, like... I thought I'd take her out initially the minute day one baby comes home mm. and somebody said to me, well, leave her in for like the first month and just settle her in. I was like, okay. Um, and we had a pretty lucky pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Um, the usual like bad heartburn towards the end and uncomfortable oh. and wanting the baby out and all of that. Heartburn but, that's caused from oh. the hairy hair on the hair or something. That's I don't know. Say. I didn't really have two hairy babies. But um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so... I think, yeah, healthy, generally hit healthy pregnancy. Yeah. Um, had a late scan and mm-hmm. they said, hmm, might be something, just a measurement wrong with the heart. But they said, look, it's nothing to worry about. Just get her a scan when she's six weeks old to rule it out. It's, mm-hmm. it's nothing. Okay. I had a little flicker of, oh. And then yeah. it was like, well, look, it's nothing. They've reassured me. It's fine. Um, and day three then of Rose's life, we were whisked away in emergency ambulance from the maternity hospital straight to the children's. Um, she did have a pretty serious heart condition wow. um, that wasn't detected. And I've since found out a lot of them aren't detected oh. um, in utero. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, we were transferred day three and she had open heart surgery mm. on day five of her life. Wow. wow. So, oh. yeah. Very that was stressful time. Very stressful. Yeah. 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 Um, and I have to say, like, work were amazing from the start. Mm-hmm. Kind of, how can we support you? What can we do? Like. I had had a cesarean, so they were like, we know you can't drive. Do you need, like, we'll pay for Ubers back and forth to the hospital for wow. you. Um, that was really hard because mm. Rose was actually in hospital for two months. 
um, for the first six weeks in ICU, mm -hmm. so we couldn't stay. Mm -hmm. for those first six weeks oh, so it was back and forth every wow. day and also trying to manage Annabelle yeah um mm. and I found that very difficult because when I was with Rose I just wanted to be with Rose mm -hmm. and didn't want to leave mm. um and luckily Eduardo my husband yeah. was very balanced and just said you need to leave you mm -hmm. need to go to Annabelle she needs you and yeah if wow. you know, he's like we're here for a while and he's like you'll damage your relationship with her if you don't look after her mm -hmm. so we kept her in daycare five days a week but we always picked her up every day and dropped her in in the morning and spent the day in the hospital and then one of us would go back in the evening time. Yeah. So yeah, it was not what I expected from my yeah. mat leave wow. at all. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe having it being my second, I was kind of used to things not going to plan, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, in a way, I think it was good that she was my second because yeah. I think it would have been yes. a lot harder. You some coping strategies yes. without really yeah. even probably noticing yeah. it at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because mm -hmm. I think on your first, well, for me, I, yes, I'm really planned, mm -hmm. I'm organised. Um, if something isn't going well in work, for example, I can research, I can look up how to do it mm. and then implement a plan. Mm -hmm. And it was a bit of a shock that that's not the case when it comes to babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't realise. And have you changed again? <coughs> you know, we're talking about sort of personality changes and priorities changing now with Rose in this very different situation. Yeah. How have you adapted? Um, it's, it's definitely different. Mm -hmm. um, and say, for example, with Annabelle, she's, she'd never been to the doctor, only to rule out sicknesses to get her back into daycare. Mm -hmm. She'd never actually been sick. Mm -hmm. So now it is quite different and Rose gets a bad cold or like she got picked up toddler germs from Annabelle and then yeah. ends up back in emergency earlier this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking, oh, you know, how this is going to be probably an ongoing thing with her. Her yeah. immune system isn't great mm -hmm. and we had always presumed she'd go into daycare as well and now we're thinking, oh, well, maybe is it better that, she get, that we get a nanny in for the two of them mm -hmm. and yeah, we don't know. So I'm actually a bit more comfortable with unknowns now. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. used to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like, we'll just see how it all pans out mm -hmm. and we'll have to work it out. It's all about being incredibly adaptable, isn't it? And having to adapt, not only for your work and home life, but within both of those contexts as well. Yeah. Having to yeah. constantly adapt yeah. to whatever the circumstances yeah. bring. But yeah. I think it is interesting because I think a few weeks ago I was feeling like, oh, I don't know, this is fabulous being at home with my baby and being home with Annabelle two days, I have her off only two days, but I was like, this mm. is so beautiful and like, I don't want to go back to work and, oh, and then I went in for a day oh. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, I like That's my job. Life with that energy. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. it was a really nice reminder. Okay. Yeah. So those like keeping in touch days, I think are important. And that's because something can, a lot of women don't know about yeah, the keeping in touch yeah, days. So yeah. you get 10 days mm -hmm. fully paid keeping in touch. Um, and from what I can tell, I saw those like, rules, but I think each organization is flexible on how mm -hmm. you use them. Mm -hmm. So seek even include like Christmas parties and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, you can, so you can keep socially that. connected. Yeah. 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 Great. Um, and so even I, I think on your first, I didn't know to ask for things, but this time I've asked, I've said, okay, keeping in touch days do you know if there's some like training that I went on before I went on mat leave I'd like to revisit that before I come back so mm -hmm. I might do that from home and take mm -hmm. a few days to do that and use them as keeping in touch days mm -hmm. um, or arrange meetings like I heard somebody is leaving so I've said oh, I'd love to meet you before so I'll go in next week for mm -hmm. and catch up with a few people for mm -hmm. a few hours and mm -hmm kind of let HR know and they'll know then that's some of my keeping in touch mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. um, but it was good because you do, I, I, I don't know, I think I got like, oh, well, what if I don't want to? And mm -hmm. then I thought, oh, do you know what? Yeah, going back in was is a nice reminder. Yeah. 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 And managing that uncertainty, what's your kind of mm -hmm. advice for other mums around that? Because you, what you're saying is, well, I don't know. Things yeah. might be different this time around. Yeah. Oh, that's part it's really hard, mm. I think, just to kind of have to accept it mm -hmm. and like, you not know, try to control everything. Mm -hmm. um, have to let go a little bit. Yeah. And yep. even for me, I think I drove myself crazy the first time reading every article I could. And I never, I think I've never come across anything that's so polarizing with parenting. Mm -hmm. So black and white and mm -hmm. no gray. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you have to do it this way or you mm -hmm. have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, like even for me, you know, you, you have to either work part time or you have to go back full time. And it's like, no, there's gray areas and there's mm -hmm. flexibility. Yeah. and with everything, with like sleep, which was my bane of my first no. mat leave. You know, it was, if I'd read yeah. an article, I'd come back to my husband, we have to do it, okay, mm -hmm. this is gonna solve all mm -hmm. our problems. Mm -hmm. And two days it wouldn't work. And then I'm like, okay, 
I've got a new one. We're going to try this way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can't, yeah, you just can't kind of control that. Yeah, yeah. So it's... So in terms right. of what you can't control when returning to work, <laughs> yeah. what are the things that really have helped you um, to feel confident in that mm. process and, and balancing both of those things, do you think? Um, I think really thinking through how you want to go back and mm -hmm. what role you want to go into and being pretty clear with people up front. Okay. So not just going back on day one I think having some meetings kind of leading up to it and connecting okay. yourself back in the organization mm -hmm. and then I think even I presumed I'd go back five days right from the very start mm -hmm. yeah. um, and Justine kind of coached me that actually ramping up is probably a good idea yeah. Yeah. and that's yeah. really good advice yeah that a lot of people don't know okay. and it's something so simple mm -hmm. just start off even two days a week or three days a week and and I said to work you know I'm gonna see how I go mm. and I think within three weeks I was probably back you know, well, at the time, for those four days, I felt comfortable. I'd ramped up quick enough, but I would mm -hmm. kind of say to people, take it at your own pace. Don't make any yeah. promises. Yes. Um, because for some people, it will take a lot longer, mm. um, especially if their kids don't adjust into childcare. Or So I think giving yourself as much flexibility as you can mm -hmm. and just having those conversations with work early, mm -hmm. I think is important. And keeping an open mind yeah. before you start yeah. that any... Anything can happen. Can happen. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, Any priorities might change. Yeah, and mm. find if people can find out what could happen. Mm -hmm. I, I like that it's not it's not always gonna work for you starting back yeah. buying for a And stay everyone's different. For long. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah, and it's okay. Yeah. 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 And every baby's different. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and even the pregnancy can be different, yeah. can't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. So how do you feel now being a working mum in yeah. terms of your your identity, your personality, mm. what, are you, what are you proud of with, with how you're coping? Um, I think I was really proud of getting that promotion when I went back. Yeah. yeah. Um, that really helped me with my confidence. I think when I first started back, I was, I was like, yeah, I kind of thought like, oh, I'm out of the workforce for nine months. Have I lost mm. it all or am I not as sharp and I won't be on top of things? Yeah. And then just giving yourself a bit of a break and saying, mm. well, of course, you're not going to switch back on day one, mm. um, giving yourself a bit of time to adjust. And, yep. But you're still kind of like, even me, I was like, oh, do I really have the confidence to go for my mm -hmm. boss's role? It's so big. And, you know, should I really want this? And even like, if I'm this career driven, does is that mean I'm a bad mom? Mm. And it doesn't. And I'm not saying you can have it all, yeah. but you can try yeah, and yeah. don't let it hold you back mm -hmm. because potentially it would have held me back without the coaching. And yeah. then I kind of said, no, go for this. Mm -hmm. And um, that was so rewarding, kind of going for it and getting that promotion and people turning around to me saying, well, of course you deserve it. And we yeah. expected you to go for that and yeah. expected you to get it. And just so not let yourself, like talk yourself out of something. Yeah. 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 Believe yourself, awesome. back yourself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you've got it in there. You had it yeah. and you've still got it. Yeah. Just need to work out how to make it all be able to work yeah 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 big challenges but exciting it is Absolutely. yeah, yeah. But i think like, there's there's so many other things that go on when you're on this like my husband does the daycare drop-offs and pickups okay and um then i was feeling really disconnected from daycare and so the day i work from home the one day a week i do the drop-offs and pickups mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that's really important yeah because otherwise i felt like a bit of a distant mom or something i didn't feel like i was yeah. connected connected mm. and knowing who's looking after my children mm. and just it's having fun. that chat with them and yeah. yeah so that that helped as well so I think it is about constantly readjusting okay mm -hmm. as you go yeah. yeah yeah absolutely any other final kind of tips or you know <coughs> ways that you take care of yourself in managing this huge load that you can share with us I think that's really hard yeah it's really hard to look after yourself because mm. you kind of come last in a lot mm. of times uh -huh. um but for me this time i was like i need to start back exercise a bit earlier okay. so even pilates um and it's just gentle exercise and it's lovely but it really helps me yep. or i cycle to work mm -hmm. so that kind of gives me that headspace yep. i find it's a really good barrier or separation so i leave work and by the time i get home because i'm like focused on yeah. traffic and mm not getting doored on St Kilda Road. Um, <laughs> so by the time, yeah, I get home, I kind of feel like yeah. I've left work behind me, yeah. Um, yeah. which is really nice. Okay. Yeah, I do sometimes log on in the evening, but that's a choice thing. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And I, it's really important for me to be home every evening for dinner and bath time. 
Mm. I think you just need to know what your priorities are. Yeah. Really, I think really think about what's important to you, and try and make it happen. Mm -hmm. I think ask. Don't be afraid to ask because you'd be surprised yeah. that people can be flexible and yeah, they're open to kind of allowing you be a mom and be a working mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much. It's uh, so great to hear, listen to your words of wisdom, your insights, um, understand the challenges yeah. that many women face and also just, um, and men as well. Mm. Um, and importantly, working out your own priorities and they'll shift all the time yep. uh, to make it work for you yeah. and your family. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for coming on to the Mum Drum today and sharing it with us yeah. and helping lots of other mums and dads who are going to be navigating that transition and struggling with the juggle at different times. Yeah. Yeah. And Thank thanks you. for bringing Rose as well. She's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> thanks again. Thank you. So thanks for watching The Mum Drum. That's all we have time for today. I have to say, it's so good to know that we're not alone. That's right. And at some level, we're mm. all struggling with the juggle. Yeah. So thanks again for watching. And hopefully we'll see you next time on The Mum Drum. Bye for now. <laughs>